Hi everyone, I'm Mohamed El Morsi, a PhD candidate at McMaster University, Ontario, Canada. I'm pleased to be with you today at the online international meeting for users of OpenForm. My presentation today is going to cover single phase flow in digital rocks while investigating optimization of several parameters. This work is part of my PhD research supervised by Dr. Wadi Dakhni and Dr. Robin Za. First of all, studying rocks and subsurface porous media characteristics such as porosity and permeability are major factors in forecasting fluid flow behavior. This is a key activity to deal with natural and industrial operations such as groundwater movement, oil extraction, and geological carbon dioxide sequestration. In order to study subsurface porous media, Conventionally, engineers extract soil cores and carry out lab, uh, and carry out lab, uh, lab based experiments over them to estimate soil properties such as porosity and permeability. And lab based experiments are usually expensive, labor intensive, time consuming, and require the presence of the physical sample. Recently, with the advances in imaging technology, uh, modern desktop X-ray machines are capable of scanning our rock sample in as little as a few minutes, and we can scan real rocks and retrieve their internal structure representation in a digital format. In order to do so, we use micro CT technology, which is a 3 a 3D uh, X-ray uh, imaging, the same method used in medical CT scans. They have the advantage of high resolution being non-destructive and fast. As a result of this technology is a fuse, we now have unprecedented uh, access to three-dimensional visualizations of various subsurface materials, which are readily available in online repositories, uh, such as digital rocks portal. The output of CT scanning uh, are grayscale images that need to undergo segmentation process to obtain a segmented pore structure of the rock. Having gotten the internal structures of the rock, we can perform numerical experiments to extract important physical properties of the sample. For example, uh, one can use a CFD based tool such as OpenFoam to simulate fluid flows through the rock's porous medium to obtain the permeability of the rock sample. This approach is inexpensive and non-destructive because it's fully digital, which means that once we have the digital rock representation data, we can simply send it to professionals anywhere via email, for example, in a matter of seconds, in order to conduct the required digital experiments. But how exactly we can do that using OpenFOR? Here, we illustrate a single phase uh, flow simulation framework in OpenFOAM. We start with a stack of binarized images representing the void and solid phases of a given rock sample. In this example, uh, black pixels uh, correspond to the void phase, while white pixel pixels correspond to the uh, solid phase. The images are used to create an STL file, the 3D structure format that can be understood by OpenFOAM. Then we use the STL file to extract surface features and initiate the block mesh in the sample domain. Prior to running the meshing operation using the Snappy Hex Mesh utility, we need to extract at least one point that's located inside the permeable domain for correct mesh removal of the solid phase. Then in order to force a fluid flow in the mesh uh, in the meshed permeable domain, we apply a pressure gradient in the direction of interest between the inlet and the outlet. We simulate the case as incompressible steady viscous flow, and by using the volume conservation equation and neighbor stokes equation, the pressure and velocity are solved iteratively using the simple algorithm. Finally, uh, we get the final velocity uh, field that we can integrate and use in Darcy law uh, to calculate the fluid permeability in each solvent direction. 
but why it's essential in our application to use SnappyHex mesh utility. SnappyHex mesh uh, optimizes the open flow mesh operation where it can provide finer mesh regions close to, close to uh, the simulated volume edges. And this reduces the total number of mesh cells needed to simulate an open foam case and consequently reduces the computational cost in terms of time and memory dramatically. In digital rock simulations, where capturing the poor structure details on the micro scale is essential for accurate results, we employ the snap hex mesh uh, because this is, 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 this is essential in order to have accurate simulation with an affordable final mesh size. Uh, but still, it's a challenging task for the user to pick the optimum initial plot mesh size and the number of castellated mesh refinement levels in Snappy Hex mesh. Uh, then we, uh, we use three uh, rock samples, uh, namely peat bag of spheres, East Lades limestone, and Pensumer Sandstone to simulate a single phase flow for permeability estimation. They are all a 300 Q voxels in size uh, with various resolutions and processes. Uh, and the CT segmented images of these three rock samples were, prov were provided by uh, Muljadi et al. 2016 and are publicly available online in digital rock portal. Here are uh, parameters, the parameters configuration used in open form simulation. We used a uh, plot mesh grid size of 150 by 150 by 150, and we used two castellated mesh refinement levels. This means that every plot mesh grid cell will be split into two cells in every direction for two iterations. So by having this mesh uh, parameters configuration, the, the resulted number of cells per sample voxel in each direction, we refer here as n, will be equal to two. For the sample form solver, we use a dynamic viscosity that corresponds to water, and we used uh, 10 to the power minus six a residual limit for pressure and velocity. Uh, here we can see the simulation results for the beat back of sphere sample. We simulated uh, water flow across all uh, three directions. And in the middle, uh, we can see the pressure gradient. Uh, and on the right, we can see the water particles, the streamlines, and they are colored by their velocity magnitude. Similarly, we simulated the East Lades limestone sample for permeability calculation. We can note that uh, the high level of the heterogeneity of the limestone sample uh, leading to substantial difference of permeability values in each direction, ranging multiple orders of magnitude. And this emphasizes on the effect of volumetric spatial features on the porous media flow characteristics. Uh, lastly, here uh, are the results for the Pensumer Sandstone sample. The permeability results in three directions are in the order of three Darcy, and the final permeability values were validated with Bejalik et al. 2013 and Muljadi et al. 2016 results with around 3% uh, uh, tolerance. And with the speaking of tolerance, we have noticed that the final permeability accuracy is dependent on the mesh configuration. The finer the mesh, the more accurate are the results. But also, it's a trade-off uh, with the computational cost in terms of time and memory. Uh, for example, simulating the pentamine sandstone sample smaller than one, one millimeter cube in size with the previously mentioned configuration, it required four hours plus to simulate uh, using 2.6 gigahertz CPU and it consumed 16 gigabytes of RAM. Even with using Snappy Hex Mesh utility, that could save tremendous computational power. <clears throat> so a personal computer with such hardware setup will be limited to simulate uh, bigger samples. Uh, so it was important to conduct a parametric study 
to find out the optimum snappy hex mesh design configuration in terms of permeability accuracy and the computational cost. In order to conduct this parametric study, uh, we use a smaller subsample of the original pentium sandstone to be able to further simulate finer meshes uh, using the same given hardware setup. We simulated the new uh, 150 cube voxel sample by employing different n values, ranges between 0.25 to 4, where n is the number of mesh cells per voxel in each direction. Uh, here is the detailed various simulation parameters. We have a sample size of 150 cube uh, voxels, and we used block mesh grid sizes of 37 and 75. For snappy hex, for snappy hex mesh, uh, we use multiple number of refinement levels, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and the resulted number of cells per voxel in each direction was 0.25, 1, 2, uh, 3, and 4. And we also uh, simulated water flow with pressure and velocity residual equals to 10 to the power minus 6. We conducted nine different simulations in x, y, and z directions uh, with different n values while tracking important values such as effective porosity, relative error, and simulation time. Uh, we found that by increasing the n value, we can achieve higher effective processes, meaning that more micro pores and narrower th uh, throats are included in the meshed space. This leads to higher permeability accuracies at the cost of increasing the simulation time. We also noted that the effective processes started to stabilize with n value equal to two or higher, uh, but also with increasing n value the meshing and solving times increases uh, significantly. We found that using n values equals to two and three are were uh, like are were significant relative performance uh, was achieved while maintaining relative error tolerance below three and one percent respectively. Uh, here's a graph that illustrates the impact of the n value on the simulation relative performance. We, we estimate the relative performance by calculating the permeability uh, error and simulating time relative to the case with n value equals to four. We see that uh, with increasing the n value, we achieve less permeability relative error at the cost of increasing relative simulation time, which increases parabolically. We suggest that using n equals to two compared to n equals to four is an optimum meshing configuration that can save 85% of simulation time while achieving a low error tolerance below 3%. We then built on the mesh design optimization process to further push the simulation speed up uh, by utilizing parallel computing. The decomposed power utility in open foam decomposed the case and distributed over multiple cores to be meshed and solved in parallel. And we can reconstruct the case again uh, after every operation. We can choose between three decomposition methods. The first one uh, is the simple method in which we can manually define the number of subdomains in each direction. Then we have this, the hierarchical method, which is similar to the simple method, uh, but additionally, we can specify the order of decomposition. Uh, lastly, the Scotch method, uh, where no geometrical information is needed, actually was employed in our study because we found it to be the most stable method and less error prone. We ran the simulations using server processor with 3.2 gigahertz CPU capability and with 64 cores. Here is a visualization uh, of the effect of using parallel computing on performance in terms of processor utilization and relative time or speed up time. Uh, utilization here refers to CPU processor utilization and speed up is relative time speed up to using only one processor core. 
we found the optimal configuration could achieve around eight times speed up by utilizing parallel computing in open form with uh, 32 cores. And now we can fully simulate the same case in as little as four minutes. This is a game changer in case of patch analysis. To conclude our study, we find that digitizing rock, uh, digitizing rocks for digital uh, physics studies is uh, revolutionizing uh, subsurface characterization and open form as an open source C CFD based tool can lead this revolution. Uh, Snappy Hex Mesh is a powerful utility to reduce open form simulation computation at cost and tailoring the mesh design for a given uh, project uh, is important to achieve the accuracy required while achieving the least computational cost possible. Lastly, using open form parallel computing utilities significantly speeds up the simulation time uh, up to eight times using 32 cores versus using only one core. Here are the references used in this study. And thank you for your time. And please feel free uh, to contact uh, me at inmorecm at macmaster.ca for any inquiries regarding my presentation. And thank you.